All right, everybody. Um, my name is uh, Jacob Berman. Um, I'm the founder of the Swiss Ops 100. We founded in 2017, first race, and it's been co uh, race directing ever since then. And to my right is the amazing. My name is Christian Langenegger, and since 2017, I've been supporting <laughs> Jacob with the Swiss Ops 100 uh, as a um, co uh, course director. And over on my left, yeah, my name is Frank Biga, and I've also been there from the start. And I've been supporting with the National Ski Patrol, the Mountain Search and Rescue, and the last couple of years, I am the end runner. So if you see me on the 160 kilometer course, do not panic, but you will be at the end of the race, and you will be running very short to the cut of times. Exactly. Yeah. We wanted to create this video because we see that sometimes runners are not fully prepared exactly. for what they're going to encounter on probably the most beautiful trail run in the Swiss Alps and the European Alps in total, I believe. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Very nice. Yeah. So we've got a very technical run along some of the most beautiful uh, scenery, uh, UNESCO World Heritage, uh, or Natural Heritage Site. So the, the entire Alec Arena that you'll be running through. Um, all that said, there's lots of tourists here, but our trail is very technical and requires a bit of mountain know-how. So that's why I wanted to make this. Before we start, uh, we're going to do a flyover and explain to you what you can expect in different places, in different locations. But I just want to touch base on the marking too, because it's obviously very important. Uh, we have these flags. This is our main marking thing, and uh, they have reflective uh, strip on it and we got these ribbons uh, they're super reflective and uh, they're very visible in the nature um, on important turns or splits we have signs uh, unfortunately people too like to take those markings away it happens every year so I strongly recommend that you get familiarized with the course as best as you can and even load the course on your smartwatch on your GPS watch uh, so you, uh, you can see the track or um, we have live tracking so if you have the app you can always open it and see where you are and just make sure you're still on track. Here we go. Let's get started. Yeah. So obviously the race starts at the finish. Uh, make sure you start at the time you're supposed to start. Um, the 160 vertical is Friday, 50k, 100k uh, is on Saturday. First part of the course is, uh, is non-technical. It goes up, beautiful uh, meadows, lots of flowers, forest, but do wear trail running shoes. Uh, the first part is really easy, but it gets more and more tricky, and specifically if it's wet, trail running shoes is an absolute must. You will then be heading naturally up the main uh, hiking path, where you go to uh, Kyboden? Kyboden, right. And um, I just want to mention here that um, I recommend you to take it easy that course unless you're heading for the podium or you're a really strong runner. Uh, if you go for like a two hour pace on the first aid station, I think that's fine. Even if you feel strong, uh, just take the time. It really helps you out later. At Kyboden, you want to stick to your left uh, as you take the road. Oh, yeah, at the aid station itself, there's a, a, a split between uh, the vertical, take a right, uh, and go straight up to Eckeshorn to the finish line, and all the other ones are going to stay straight on the path. After about 500 meters from Kyboden, it's super runnable. Uh, you will see a split <laughs> again. Uh, uh, again, and uh, the 50k and the 100k uh, goes to the right, and the 160k goes to the left. Yeah. You will then be running a fairly flat, uh, really nice stretch with beautiful mountain views. Uh, so just open up the legs and get a bit of speed here. There's plenty to drink, both from fountains and from, uh, from other water sources. And you'll be heading through the beautiful hills of Betmaal, where probably a lot of people will be cheering you on. And then from Betmaal, you will go towards um, uh, Riedal, and then from Riedal is about two, three hundred hike meters up to the next aid station, which is called Riedal Furka. Exactly. Okay. There you can find your first uh, drop bag location, so you can take advantage of that. 
this, especially for when you hit the station again. So you hit the station twice uh, between Nida Furka and the next station, which was will be uh, Bella. Yep. yep. Um, there's a lot of beautiful places down in the valley, so I always get them in there. But here you're going to have quite a bit of time with no water sources, so really take time, fill up your water, your water, ba- your water sacks, your water bottles, drink enough, be hydrated, eat, make sure you have enough energy to uh, start a, a nice little descent down towards um, the, the valley carved out by the Alex Glacier before it retreated. Exactly. Make sure after the aid station there is an arrow, make a right side, um, a right turn. Uh, we're going to run this counterclockwise. Uh, last year, unfortunately, a couple of runners ran it the wrong way and got disqualified. So there's a big sign, don't miss it, turn right. Yeah, you'll be running over the first suspension bridge. Yeah. It's incredible, beautiful. Um, there is a couple of uh, small streams, but the water is really not that drinkable because you have cows in the area. So uh, as Christian said before, you know, you know, uh, you fill up your water bottles and read the water. You then come to a, a small, little bit dramatic hike up to a beautiful white church, which is called the Bella Aid Station. Yes. At the Bell Aid Station, you have to be aware that if you are in the mid pack or end of the pack, you might see runners going a different route than you're going, but you will be heading naturally straight up uh, towards the highest point uh, in the course, I believe it's around 2,800 meters or something like that, uh, where you have a fantastic view to the Matterhorn, to the Weisshorn, and other 4,000ers, and you'll be seeing a, a big chunk of the race course really. You'll be able to see the, the path where you'll be following the, the, the alleged glacier. You're able to see back up to a leader field where you just were, and you're going back there, and you'll be able to see all the way to Roswell, which uh, for many runners will be, you know, 15 hours or something later in, in, the, in the course. So you do a, a turn around up there, around the lake, and you'll be heading down a fantastic flowy trail. It's a single trail, and you can really open it up. There's a lot of goats in that area. And uh, what's important is when you hit the Bella Bay station, you need to take a uh, you need to take a decision. If you're at this point, you know, uh, thinking about dropping, you need to drop you. Because from uh, basically from Bella, you'll be going straight down uh, and up to Rita Fulga. And Rita Fulga is a bad place to drop. It's, it's possible, but it's bad. And from Rita Fulga all the way to Glacier Stube it is even worse. And then you actually have to get all the way down into the valley. So this is one of those key areas where you really have to feel that if you got an injury, if your knee is, is broken already, if you're fully taped up, you need to take a hard choice here. It's super runnable. There is access to water. Um, there's really nothing to, to shout out for. Uh, you go down to Blatten. It's, uh, it's not a technical downhill. And there you will hit the, uh, the large dam. On the dam, you will be uh, on some iron uh, staircases. They are moving in the wind, and if there's more runners on it. Some people got a little bit of vertigo there. Yep. Um, you go out on the dam, it's fantastic, beautiful. It's a huge concrete dam, probably several hundred meters down. Um, it's, it's really beautiful. It's a, it's a, it's a very special yep. uh, experience, I would say. Exactly. But after that beautiful experience, you have quite a climb going up. Uh, it's, as you say, it's probably one of the toughest climbs in the race. Uh, there's, there's two tough climbs and the two really tough climbs in this yeah. race. This is the first one, and uh, the second one uh, is, is coming. Uh, it was a uh, bike. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. So you're back at the Wiederfurka. Take advantage of your drop bags. Um, just uh, fill up, uh, drink up, eat up. Do what you have to do there. If you're in the back of the pack, it's uh, the end of the day. Uh, it's probably a good time to take a dry layer because you'll be running next to the Alex Glacier for the next 7, 8, 9, 10 kilometers. And at night, that's like running next to an ice cube. Uh, during the day, it's extremely warm if the sun is on. So uh, you'll be having a lot of radiation, sun cream, uh, drink some water, etc. But you're now coming to, uh, from a photographic perspective, probably some of the most beautiful parts you can be in the whole Alps, running next to the largest glacier which is left yes yes it's a quite a privilege to run there it's a UNESCO World Heritage Place and um, just really enjoyed it the part you then take a right turn around the an edge it's really well marked and you go to the fantastic uh, aid station of uh, Gletscherstube they normally have a little bit of warm to drink 
and from there uh, you'll be heading up. Uh, it's a no drop zone by the way, you, you cannot exit that place. Yep. Uh, it will take you a lot of hours to get out there, so uh, you will need to continue there. Um, you will then uh, head up to a small pass and then you come down a, 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 a fairly technical, yeah. very mixed, varied route. Um, there is uh, vertical ladders, there is uh, staircases, it's basically an area where the Fierce Gletscher has been many years ago and it's really carved the rock so everything is quite slippery yeah. but the, the Swiss has made it very functional and there's a lot of different uh, they yeah. got stairs, wooden stairs and everything. Yeah. 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 And you're then coming down to the second suspension bridge. Uh, most of you will be there during the day. Uh, so you have a really nice view over the suspension bridge. It's a big one. Uh, if you're there during the night, the early night, uh, it will be a uh, light with LED on it. So it's like a Christmas tree. And if you're there at the end of the night, uh, like I will be coming there, um, it's just dark. Exactly. Um, don't be mistaken, after the suspension bridge, there is quite a challenging hike uphill. It seems like going all down, it does not. And uh, there's some places you have to kind of pick, take big steps, like going yeah. up. So it, it's challenging, but just yeah, put your head down and grind it. Be careful and just make your way up to Belmont. Belval is a fantastic, beautiful, small city in the 1700 years. Uh, it's a really old town, and you'll be running through the old town with the really old uh, for, uh, you know, wooden houses built and these rock plates and uh, a beautiful church and so on. Most of you will be uh, well, too busy to, uh, to recognize that, but it's definitely one of the places where uh, it's really worth to just you know, enjoy the scenery. You would then be running uh, you know, quite steep down and then follow the valley uh, to the Niederval Lake station. Exactly. There um, is the one and only street crossing, so be careful uh, when you cross the street for traffic. They're usually pretty aware of runners, and we put up signs for sure too. And at the aid station itself, uh, there is this um, split. Yep. Yep. There's a split there. It's also at the train station. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So if you are if you arrive in Niederwald and there's no train station, you didn't arrive in Niederwald. <laughs> <laughs> right. So we have the aid station right at the train crossing. So there the split happens between 50k, go straight down hill, and the 100k and 160k making a left turn, go up the valley. So if you're confused or not sure, just ask the aid station people. There's a beautiful toilet there. <laughs> it's new, it has a wall, it has a radiator. Um, it's amazing. It's a public toilet and I, yeah, I cannot, uh, it's, it's fantastic. <laughs> so a uh, big shout out. Uh, if you need to go to the toilet, this is uh, probably the best toilet in the whole race course. Yeah, even if you don't have to, enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, cool. This part here, uh, after Niederwald, is fairly flat. It's nice wide paths all the way to Reckingen. Um, yeah, just not a lot to say here. Just enjoy that. Really, if you, this is one of the places where you can just run. Go for it. It's just like open, open everything up. up. Yeah, yeah, exactly. At Reckingen, uh, be aware between Reckingen and uh, Gletscher, uh, Kaiserstadt, it's, it's the biggest the longest uh, point between two aid stations in the race. So make sure um, you have something to eat there and something to drink and, and uh, just be aware that's a long way going to the next aid station. And it's quite an interesting way to go, which you are going to talk about. Sure, I am happy to do that. So this is actually one of the favorite parts of my course. So the first part from breaking and into the valley is not that interesting. You're following a larger fire road, and you have to be aware there's a, a, a hunter lodge or a cottage who has an outside well. It's just around where I have the marking now. Uh, so do tap some water there. Uh, there's an outside well that's very drinkable. Then after that, it goes up the ravine. Uh, this is, uh, it's been cleaned up quite a bit. So uh, it's challenging, uh, but it's, it's, it's very steep and there is uh, snow patches here. And, and this is an amazing place. So I've seen eagles there. We know that there's bear and wolf in the area, but uh, uh, there's a, a big bunch of, uh, of ibex there. So it's Einbruch in German. Mm -hmm. uh, you are very remote. There is really no normal hikers, no normal persons outside. Hunters will be coming up this ravine and coming up to this high plateau. 
uh, your field just goes up and up and up and up and then suddenly you'll be at a, at a pass where you, you cross over into a sort of the next valley and this is the only place where we know for certain that markings has always been a problem uh, there is uh, quite a few cows in the area and they love to eat these flags yeah mm -hmm. so um, there's a lot of goat tracks as well there that's, it's really just a difficult place mm -hmm. so there uh, i really you know just if you do not see markings uh you know go back a bit until you see markings it's well marked if you still can't see markings pull out your phone pull out your gps watch control exactly. where you are yeah. because the worst thing you can do is going left yeah. So if everything is, you know, if you if you're ever in doubt, just stay on the right side of of, of the mountain um, and don't go down through. Exactly. Uh, follow just uh, just follow through until you can take uh, a big natural uh, right. Uh, it looks so easy here on the flyover, but in, in reality, this point is actually quite hard to find. And when you kind of come around here, it's a little bit up and down and, and, and so forth. Um, but, but mainly down, uh, there is a, a, a well which you can drink from. It's, at a, yeah. it's a fairly new house or a renovated house who has the well. And then just after that, if you miss that, there's always a couple of cars there. There's a larger farmhouse on the left side. You need to go 50 meters in next to the trail to get your water uh, if you really need water. And then it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, a service road. Yeah, service road down to Case. It's like yeah. Steep. yeah, exactly. Okay, so start the amazing aid station. Shout out to Pascal and his crew. Uh, you will be always uh, surprised what you're going to find there. Last year we had chicken. Yeah, barbecue to fire. Yeah, yeah. He really cares about the runners and uh, yeah, he's really, really good in what he's doing there. From case it started, it gets a little, actually a little bit technical to go into the forest. It's always wet there. Um, and uh, yeah, you just you know, kind of follow through the forest and you get down to the river. Um, and you'll be following the river, and you'll be following the river, and you'll be following the river, and you'll be following the river. And uh, when you think you possibly cannot get further down the river, yeah, it's a nice bridge. And if it's really warm, uh, it's recommended maybe to cool down there. I know that uh, Rasmus and he has been swimming in there and just you know cooling down our legs. And from there, it's a very long uh, hike. It's not technical. It's just a hike, mm -hmm. uh, and it goes up to a trees full on. And uh, from please full on, there's a mountain hut. There's a non-serviced mountain hut, and there it goes uh, down. Yep. Down, 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 down into some nice forest, and you get to imagine being uh, also in the forest. Um, there's a mountain downhill mountain bike trail that you don't want to get on. Stay on our trail. Yeah, there's it goes like a, a yo has been more turns, but yep. you go pretty much straight down as much yeah. as we can to the Binay station. So this area is quite interesting. It's very famous for uh, for picking up crystals. So if you're there during the night, uh, put your uh, uh, light at the brightest level. I've actually been lucky in this area every year to pick up a mountain crystal. So uh, you know, you open your eyes and have a look. And uh, the Bin station is amazing. They have these salted, warm potatoes. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's, it's an absolute joy. And yeah. the little city is, uh, is amazing as well. Yeah. Big shout out to Marion and her husband uh, running the aid station pretty much every year. Uh, we also had uh, masseuse there, like uh, they give you a little massage on your feet but if you want to do that and stuff and it was really well perceived so we're gonna do that again because <laughs> we're definitely gonna need it. Yeah. So I said there was two tough climbs in this race. Uh, after Bing comes the second tough, uh, which goes up to, uh, to Whitehorn. So on the map, it doesn't really look like anything, but if you look at the, the height meters, it's, uh, it's, it's really steep. Mm -hmm. And it really just continues. And you'll be crossing you know, a little bit of private property, so sometimes the, the owners will remove the flags and put it out on a, on a newer hiking path. If possible, really try and stay on the original hiking path. Uh, so just follow the yellow, uh, the yellow signs, and you will get up to a real cross. So like a beautiful cross, as we say in German. Yeah. Uh, it has a it has a great view, and uh, from there you will be circumventing the the, the peak 
uh, into a big uh, meadow and you'll be able to see a white tent which is the Brighthorn aid station uh, in the backdrop. Uh, there's a lot of cows, so it's a bit muddy and so on, but just continue towards the, the aid station. Exactly, and just to add a little more dramatic to this section, it's, it's really not a, a, it's one of the shortest sections between the aid stations, but we had two hours on it and it, it was just too close, so we're going to add two and a half going forward because uh, most runners are gonna really, really going to need that at the time. At the wide one A station, we have a crossing again. So if you're on the lower end of the pack, like me, um, you will see runners coming towards you and heading down uh, the wide one. Um, so just be really careful uh, you know, that you don't just follow a runner. Uh, you will need to go left and you'll go into a fantastic valley. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a very nice path. Um, it, it, it goes um, quite a little bit uphill to a point, and then you it's gonna tip, and then you're gonna go, go downhill to the next aid station, which is Roosevelt. And another shout out to Martin, amazing guy, always helping out. Just truly, truly nice guy, and uh, you can expect quite something there, like dry meat, cheese. Spaghetti, so he, yeah, good guy, good guy. And some of the most fantastic views of the the main Rome uh, Valley uh, you'll see from there. Yes. Yep. From Roswell, you have a non technical. Uh, run uh, which goes down and you'll be enjoying yourself so much but we need to give you a shout you need to go right huh so uh, you really look out for that right turn because it's not fun if you miss that right turn and you end up five six hundred high meters lower uh, and you need to go up again yes. on the right turn is a little bit exposed the the, the road was actually uh, the, the hiking pass was taken out by an ambulance uh, some years ago yeah, but they, they, they kind of fixed it really well, mm -hmm. uh, but it is a little bit exposed and you go up and you, you basically uh, be hitting uh, the, the full one. Uh, and this is one of the, the main treats about this race as a mountain runner. This is a real peak, it's really exposed, one of the sides is probably 100-200 meters of a vertical drop. Uh, and you'll be you know, using your hands a little bit for stability. Most likely the, the gemeinde will do a little bit of uh, rope work up there. Exactly. Uh, but it's, uh, it's, a, it's really a true pleasure. It's a gem that you have a real peak on a, on a course like that. And you should enjoy it. You'll be going towards the right and you kind of come around the peak. And then you go out on a, on a ridge after the peak. And there is a, is a, is a fairly technical piece where it's, it's a lot of switchback with a lot of small moving rocks. Um, so if you're a good runner, you will be yodeling down that and have a lot of fun. If you are not that experienced as a mountain runner, be careful if you are starting some rock slides and you have people below you. Uh, it is very stable there, so you, you can always break. But uh, you know that full horn with the exposure, be careful there. And then with these switchbacks coming down to uh, the mountain path, which you've just been traveling on before. Yep. Down there you make a left turn and basically go back where you came for, uh, for a little bit till you hit the right on aid station again. Now from the aid station I have heard uh, it's uh, challenging the switchback going down. It's, it's kind of dry, kind of not so interesting as I heard. Well, your legs are pretty uh, <laughs> toasted this year. Right? Yes. The, the winner from last year, he was uh, very clear when we asked him what is yeah. the worst part of the race course. This was it. Yes. Um, if you have nothing left in your legs, this is going to be a very long and very taxing hike down. Uh, if you can run, it's definitely recommended. It's a fire road. I believe it's about 17 switchbacks. I think Jagger was saying 14. Yeah. But it's, it's a lot of switchbacks. It is a lot. It takes and forever. You need to keep your eyes open because in one of the last switchbacks, you have to go out on a small um, single trail. Yes. It's really well marked, but you're actually exiting the really big uh, fire road uh, to get down to the next aid station. Yeah, you're gonna have a sign on that uh, turn, so you, you, it's really hard to miss it there. Because after the that aid station, you go into some really nice forest, some meadows. It's um, it's a trail for anyone who likes to ride in forests. You know, it has like all that stuff. It's kind of like you you've done a lot of damage on your legs, or you, you your legs feel the downhill from. 
from coming down off the Breithorn, this is a place where you can open up again and uh, you have to jump over a few routes and things like that. But uh, it's it's comfortable and it brings you all the way to the Rudabach station, aid station, which is right before um, the third and last suspension, suspension bridge. Exactly. Yeah. It's gorgeous. The other two are nicer, and I say that because the other two are less, less visited than this one. Oh. Everyone visits this one. The other two that you hit already, they're more, they're harder to reach. So. Yeah. After the suspension bridge, you have your last really true uphill. So just grind it out, and then. Uh, You'll be going to the Fiji Tal, make a turn, and you head straight towards Fiji and to the finish line. And that's it. That's it. The, the most beautiful <laughs> 160 kilometer race in the Alps. Exactly. Yeah. So hopefully this video gives you a little uh, bit of an idea what to expect out there. It's the Swiss Alps, so it's going to be pretty challenging. Uh, it's just at this point I want to give a shout out to everybody, like all the volunteers, all the helpers. It's, it's, it takes a village to put on this race, uh, and it truly does. Uh, it's, it's a lot of work, working it all year, and the race weekend is even crazier, so a huge thank you and everybody's helping. Uh, and yeah, it's awesome. Enjoy the race!